Welcome back, y'all. This will be the final video of actual game logic. We're just going to do a sprint here and finish this thing out. So um, basically what we're going to need to do right now is add that little status label down here that says correct or incorrect after you tap on it. And then we're going to need to put in some logic to make sure that you are clicking the correct button that we got down here. So to start, let's go ahead and add that little label right here to the middle. And let's put this... Uh, we'll put it 20 pixels above the start game button. And we'll also make it 20 from the left and 20 from the right. I'm going to center it. I'm going to make it 18 pixels font. I'm going to make it black. And I am going to, uh, if it'll let me, I'm going to make it bold. <clears throat> and what we're going to put here is just uh, to have some placeholder text. It'll just say correct like that. Um, okay, so whenever the game starts, though, uh, we actually want this label to be hidden. We don't actually want to show it until you actually click the correct or incorrect answer. So down here, you'll see in this little drawing section, this property called hidden. Let's go ahead and check that box to make sure that it's hidden when the game starts. And if we run it, you'll notice that you cannot actually see that correct button. In the layout, it's just kind of faded out. That just kind of tells you that it's hidden. Um, but when we actually run the application, you can see that it really is hidden. So now we need to add some game logic to actually put incorrect or correct based on whether or not you click the correct button. So to do that, let's start by uh, making an IB outlet for this label. <clears throat> and we're going to call it status label. Okay. Now, whenever you tap on a button, we need to execute some logic. So uh, we need to create an IB action for uh, all of these buttons. The cool thing is we can make one IB action that we can connect all of the buttons to. And I'll show you what that looks like. We don't have to have an IB action for each button. We can connect them all to the same action. If we want each button to execute the same function, then we only need one IB action. So um, let's go ahead and control drag the first one here. And let's say on option button tap. Let's break that down here. And then now to connect this IB action to all the other ones, if we highlight over this little circle right here, we can see that it highlights this button because that's the one that it's connected to. But if we actually click this little circle and drag it to the second one, drag it to the third one, and drag it to the fourth one, we can see that now all of these are highlighted and every one of these buttons, if you tap on it, will click this, uh, sorry, will click, will execute this function here. So whenever we come inside this function, we need to determine if the button that you clicked is the correct one. And actually, let me go ahead and open up the view controller thing so it's easier to look at again. Um, actually, the cool thing is that we have access to the button that you tapped on with this little sender uh, property right here. So anytime that one of them is clicked, you get access to that particular button in code through this sender property. Um, you can see that the sender property is of type any, which doesn't really help us because we need access to the button. And being that Swift is type safe, we need to actually tell it specifically that this is a UI button. So let's go ahead and change that to UI button. Now, it's important to note that the application will not work correctly if you don't put the correct type for the sender. Like if I were to put UI switch or something like that, that's not the correct element and this will not work properly. The only reason we're able to put UI button is because the sender is actually a UI button. And so um, this code will actually execute properly. So basically what we need to do is in here, we need to know which is the correct button and we need to check to see if sender equals the correct button that was assigned down here. So the way that we need to do this is we need to create a property, one last property on this view controller class that represents the correct button. So let's call it, um, let's go down actually below here and let's say var correct button equal, or no, sorry, we're gonna say var correct button, which is of type UI button optional. So by setting it to an optional, whenever this view controller is initialized, the correct button will be nil. It won't actually exist yet. So we're going to set it down here once we've picked the correct element. So now we can say self.correct button equals correct button. So this correct button right here is the one that we picked as a random element. And we're going to assign that to the correct button property of the class. And since this property is available to all of these functions, we can now say in this IB action, um, if sender equals correct button. Actually, we're going to do triple equals. 
Um, and for those that don't know, the difference between double equals and triple equals is that double equals is just checking to see if these two items are just equivalent to each other. And triple equals make sure that they are actually the same exact thing and they occupy the same space in memory. So since we're going to check to make sure the sender is equal to the correct button, those are the same exact element in memory. They're the same, actually the same element. So we can do a triple equals. A triple equals is always just like more verbose, more specific. So um, in this case, either one would work, but there's no reason not to be more specific. So let's go ahead and do that. And we're going to say if sender equals correct button, then we want to change that status label text equal to correct. And if it's not the if the sender does not equal the correct button, meaning that you click the wrong one, we want to say status label dot text equals incorrect. Right? Okay. And then after we've set the actual text, we want to make sure that it's not hidden anymore. So we're going to say status label dot is hidden equals false, which is going to make it actually visible on screen, which reminds me that anytime that we start a new game, we're going to want to actually make sure that the status label does get hidden when the game starts. So at the top of this function here, we'll say status label dot is hidden equals true. Let's go ahead and run this and see what we've got. So we've got this RGB value here, 43, uh, 156, and 247. And I mean, when you're really beginning at this, and even when you get really good at it, sometimes these are really hard to like figure out what's going on, but you gotta turn on your art brain here and just say like, okay, so if it's a number between zero and 255, then it's gonna obviously be pretty green because this is almost a full green value. So it's gonna be one of these two. And then it's gonna be pretty blue and not very red. So, man, this one's kind of a shot in the dark here. I'm going to guess it's this one. Yeah, I was correct. Awesome. Now, let's go ahead and start a new game. Uh, cool. So, this one's almost full maxed out of each of these colors, which means it's going to be pretty white. Because um, 255, 255, 255 is white, and 000, 000 is black. So, this is going to be almost white. So, I'm going to guess it's this one right here, which is correct. Now let's make sure that we click the wrong one. This one's almost zero blue, so it's probably not this one. So if I click that, we're gonna get incorrect. And then if I keep clicking until I get the right one, we're gonna see correct. And we can start game, and we could just keep doing this over and over again. So congratulations, um, the game is now finally working. Uh, in the next video, we'll just kind of talk about some final thoughts and uh, just kind of recap the whole thing. See you in the next video.